Hi guys and welcome to Nick Home Renovation. I am joined here by Martin Roberts. You will know him from Homes Under the Hammer and I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. He's one of the many reasons, as is all the guys at Homes Under the Hammer, why I'm in the property market. Uh, it's one of my favourite shows and I still watch it every single time it's on. Hi Martin, how are you? Very good sir, yes. Thank <laughs> you very that. much for, for joining good? me. Yeah, it's a pleasure, good to know we've been inspiring you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, many others I'm sure. Actually, what I was wondering was how long has Homes Under the Hammer even been on now? Because I've only known it from, I'd say I've been watching it for 10 years or so. Yeah, so this year we are coming up for our 18-year anniversary. Wow. So it started in May 2003. Wow. So, so in two years' time, it'll be 20 years, which I think for any TV show is quite good. Wow. What about property? You know, I mean, uh, property has... has um, you know, it, it follows trends, doesn't it? And there's been lots of sort of makeover shows that have come and gone. And uh, the fact we're still here after 20 years, I don't know, we must be doing something right. And I'm, I'm very proud of it. Oh, definitely. Have you seen, have you ever noticed that auction has sort of, when you go to auction halls and things, the demand is just so much more these days? There's so many more people or? Yeah, I mean, I think that if you talk to most of the auctioneers, they will say um, that, um, we have demystified the auction property auction process and made it very accessible so that when you know i think probably before homes of the hammer started it it had a slightly mysterious sort of feel to it didn't it um and people wondered whether or not it, you know the properties were all you know ones with lots of problems and all the people who bought them were <clears throat> just hard-nosed developers and and of course you know, the, there's an element of that in, in auctions, but, you know, there's also a huge element of just normal properties and normal people. So I think we did our bit to to demystify it. And, um, you know, the numbers of people going to the auctions and the success of auctions in the UK has continued. And I think we've played a part in that. Oh, yeah, definitely. And is it something that you've been involved with personally before? Have you ever bought anything at auction or...? <laughs> Yeah, so I hadn't until I started Homes Under the Hammer. I bought a few things at, at uh, furniture auctions and things like that. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but no, but in terms of uh, properties, no, I hadn't. Um, obviously, since doing the show, I have, because, again, <laughs> I, I found out myself that, you know, you get some very interesting properties that come up. And unusual ones and ones that, you know, ones that more often than not need quite a lot of work. And I think, you know, one of the things which, is good to look for as i'm sure you know is 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 properties that you can add value to yeah um and that's where you can put your own time and effort in and um and push the value up push the price up you know and if that means you do it up and then sell it on build a bit of a pot you know a lot of people struggle don't they and saying how do we get onto the property ladder and i haven't got the money to do it and um, I said, well, you know, one of the things you have got is time and enthusiasm. So if you can, you know, get a small pot of money together to get your first one, buy something that isn't at all what you'd want in the long term, but maybe it's cheaper, maybe it's outside from where you are located and you can, you know, and you can do the work on it and just start to build, um, build equity, you know, that, that's actual money that you've, you've got to play with. Yeah. So don't so, you know, so just just be flexible at the start, uh, and for that reason, I think you know auctions throw up all sorts of interesting opportunities for, you know, for people who are starting out, first time buyers, um, you know, um, people who, you know, who 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 maybe haven't got a lot of cash, who, who can get in there and, and and use what they have got, which is their time and energy. Yeah, and I've been watching your um, your Instagram videos and stuff. They're always so hilarious. I love how you just go off on a tangent sometimes. But I noticed someone asked you um, about a property in Italy. Is it that you you have or yes. is it land or? Yeah, no, I years ago, and I, and honestly, I can't remember. I think it was probably about fifteen years ago now. Um, I did a show called. I think it was the early stages of put your money where your mouth is. I'm not sure. But anyway, it was where I went out to try and find um, uh, a house to renovate in uh, abroad and in Italy. And it was the whole journey of finding this this rundown property in this 
in this fairly unknown part of of, um, of Italy, the mountainous regions um, of La Marche, and um, uh, and it was just a lovely story. Partly because well, I couldn't speak any Italian, <laughs> so I was trying to work my way through this 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 process, and it just being wonderfully old fashioned and like you know before they would sell the house to me this i found this rundown ruin on the side of a hill oh, wow. um which i just instantly fell in love with and it was owned by some people whose 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 parents had, had died it used to be their place many years ago but there'd been earthquakes in the region and it it completely it was completely derelict and still is but um i had to go and meet the family and have dinner with the family um, and to make sure that they they liked me and that I was a suitable person to have as a neighbour. And I thought, well, how, how marvellously splendid that is, you know. The fact <laughs> they, yeah. And uh, I've forgotten, they served something that I, oh, spinach, that was it. That They served like a spinach souffle and it's Italian delicacy. And I hate spinach. So, so in, 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 in for the purposes of of um for the purposes of, of 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 not offending i ate this spinach whatever <laughs> it was <laughs> but i ended up getting the house and it's it, it it various things have got in the way between now and then uh or, or then and now um, but i do want to go back and do it because it, it was one of those dream projects oh, a lot wow. of work and you think gosh getting to know builders in the uk is going to be complicated there <laughs> it would yeah. be, oh my gosh can't speak the language trying to renovate a house in italy but it would be you know it would be amazing you know in the end wow yeah and actually a lot of my viewers get in touch with me and ask for ways that they can save money not on buying a thing or the kitchen, but how can they save money from doing things themselves? Do you have any tips for something they can do that isn't, you know, dangerous like electrics or plumbing and that they can really do to save some money on their own renovation? Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, as you say, there's things you can't do and that's um, electrics and gas and major building works, you know, that require you knocking down walls um, you know, and putting up things which are going to cause a lot of pain if they fall down, uh, and things which you should probably put in the hands of, of people who do it all the time. Um, but other than that, I think people need to just have more confidence in, 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 in their abilities because, you know, I think a lot of people don't even start because they think it's not going to be perfect. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect. It won't be perfect first time. But it'll be a really good, you know, start. And certainly things like tiling and obviously all the painting and decorating, oh, yeah. um, stripping things. Um, you know, I'm a huge believer in um, in uh, in a, trying to reveal original features. So you know, if you've got you know just things that have been hidden under layers of paint, just just having the time and energy to just sit and just strip those things back or get a higher. Uh, um, you know, a floor sander and 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 sand the floors and mm. um, you know and and um, you know even fitting kitchens and things. You know, it's it's there are a few bits that are tricky, but the majority of it isn't, right? The majority of it is 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 fairly simple. So you can. Uh, here's the thing. So I even I admit that I hate silicon sealing. <laughs> but it's not a complicated job, right? Yeah. So most people could do it, but I would say that most people mess it up because <laughs> I do, and I still haven't found the way to silicon seal properly. So what I did in the last renovation project was that I left all the silicon sealing, and then I got a company that specialised in silicon sealing in to come and silicon seal the heck out of everything, <laughs> and they charged me three hundred quid for two people for it for most part of the day, including all the materials. To come and silicon steel the bath two bathrooms the kitchen you know everything and they've done it perfectly yeah so i could have done the kitchen and got it up to a certain standard and then come it's got somebody in just to cut that really annoying joint <laughs> on the work surfaces yeah you know or i could have got somebody in just to do the silicon sealing or you know what whatever whatever it is so you know there's there's it's, there's lots of things that are hidden that nobody will ever see so you can mess them up so don't be afraid to to do that and then just 
get get people in if you're not confident who can just do the finishing touches and make it look like it's been done by a pro brilliant yeah and i guess these days the power of youtube as well there's so much on youtube to, to see and i saw you looking at your system your, your specific system was it was on youtube for you to fix i just couldn't believe it i mean you know <laughs> I've got my own YouTube channel now, and it's for Martin Roberts Property Tip. It's, I'm very proud of it. But it does amaze me that there are, you know, and I, I get a, a reasonable number of people viewing my videos, not as many as I'd like, but I get a reasonable number. And then I go on and I go, right, fine. Um, I'm, I'm trying to fit this system in this particular place. How do I do this? It's a bit of plastic. It's got a thousand different ways of coming apart. I go, so there's no way. So I get, I get the name, and it's something like, you know, the Gurgle Meister or whatever. <laughs> so I Google get on youtube gurgle meister fitting and there's this video comes up and it's a man fitting this exact thing not not, not a sort of generic you know cistern in a toilet thing that fills with but the specific blue plastic gurgle meister and Amazing. this thing has had like 115,000 hits oh of people viewing why on earth have 115,000 people sat there and watched whoever it was filming himself fit the Gurgermeister. Now, it was very useful for me, but you know, <laughs> I, I produce what I think are really good videos. And I get, you know, a few thousands here and whatever, but I go, how come, how come that video's got 115,000 views? He's fitting a toilet system. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but I was very happy that it was there. And you know, hey, it brilliant. Is, that's that's is, the amazing thing about YouTube. It is such a crazy place. I mean, even on Instagram, I've put, uh, little stories of my whole renovation of a kitchen so before and afters time lapses of the work going on and it will do nothing and then I'll put a floor screening video on which is literally just someone screening a floor and people <laughs> love it and the, I've had like 137,000 views on one of them I think and it's just oh, someone yeah. screening a floor <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> I think the time lapse stuff is quite fun you've got some time lapse stuff on your uh on your site haven't you um, yeah it's always annoying uh, when a, a builder or carpenter blocks it though that which just tends to happen even though you tell them it's there and they'll just shove a kitchen unit right in front of it for the duration yeah um, <laughs> something else i need to learn from okay martin well thanks very much for joining me on my channel um can you please tell everyone where they can follow your instagram and your youtube channel yeah well that would be great so i'm on my instagram is martin roberts tv my Twitter is at TV Martin Roberts, and my YouTube channel is called Martin Roberts Property Tidbits. Brilliant. Thanks very much for joining me, and uh, take care. Yeah, you too, Nick. <laughs> yes, bye. You're watching Martin Roberts on my YouTube channel, Martin Roberts Property Tidbits, and a new series I'm starting where I'm interviewing people who do what I advise people to do, people who are actually getting down and actually um, just make it a success of being property investors, renovators and uh, whoever, and people who I think are doing a darn good job of it. So uh, our, our first one, I'm delighted to welcome Nick Morris. Hello, Nick. Hello, how are you? Very good, how are you? So you've been inspiring people by doing all these, uh, these, these projects on your YouTube channel. Tell me how it all started. Oh, well, um, I started off as an electrician um, back in 2009. Um, and then I just started falling in love with just properties and seeing things develop. I just love going into an absolute wreck of a property and even doing the electrics, just changing something from that's just highly dangerous and, and going to burn the house down to turning it into something really lovely. And I just I just sort of got into it with my brother, who's in sort of landscape gardening, so he could handle driveways and gardens and I could handle the electrics and we'd clear properties together and it just became something that we started with um, some inheritance money we received from our grandparents and we literally bought a house down the road from my parents um, so we could walk to it and we that was our first one we ever did in 2011 so I wasn't quite qualified as an electrician then but I could sort of ask someone from work to be there and help me out and and that's sort of how I got into it. And it's sort of grown and grown since then. And we try and do one a year and it just absolutely love it. Right. OK. I mean, I have to say you look about 17 years old. So <laughs> I, I get I get this an awful lot. I'm um, 
I'm 34 and I still can't grow a beard. So it's just, I think I'm always going to look baby faced, unfortunately. Do you still get uh, um, uh, ID'd when you go to buy a drink in pubs and things? Oh, fortunately that era has passed because I've got a few grey hairs flying through now. So I think oh, this wow. is my ID now. But I used right. to get that a lot, much to the enjoyment of my friends. Yeah. So what's the buzz about investing and developing property for you then? It's like I say, like I said before, I really, really enjoy it just turning i we love buying the, the ones that are an absolute wreck where we think most people if who are wanting to buy for themselves might be put off if you have to literally renew everything they're the ones we really really like um and i just love that feeling of just seeing it before from when you bought it through the estate agent and then when it goes back onto the market and you can literally just see the before and after and it's just so exciting when then i've sold through a few estate agencies where you do the viewings yourself as well. All right. Um, so I really enjoyed that side of it because then actually you see people walk around and say, oh, wow, this is amazing. And then you can actually stay in contact with the eventual buyer as well. And they, we've had a few comments with just texts and things over the years saying, oh, we still love it here. Thanks so much. And it's just, it's, it's really, obviously you're in it for the money as well, but it's, I think it's really rewarding doing something up that not many people will, would want to go into but we seem to enjoy it you've never had somebody turn around and say well i'd replace that kitchen we have had we have had ones like that where they've oh, just yeah. completely ripped out the bathroom and done the new bathroom but i guess it's people's tastes are different aren't they and like what your taste might be different to others but yeah, usually 99 percent of the time people just love what we've done Ah, oh, brilliant so what um tell me about some of the projects you've undertaken and we're going to share a few pictures of the things you've done Yes. So the first one we ever did was the one I was talking about earlier was in my mum and dad's road um, when we were both living at home, my brother and I. So um, that was a semi-detached house um, in 2011. And we... And how did you get the first lot of money? Was it inheritance, did you say? Yes. So it was um, my grandparents' inheritance and then the rest through mortgage and savings. Right. Because obviously um, that's the biggest question that people often ask, isn't it? It's like, I love to do this, but where am I going to get, you know, the first bit of money from? Exactly. And I think it, it would have been impossible without that, especially in 2011, maybe as the years went on and right. we started developing our own businesses. But there's no way we would have been able to do that in 2011. Um, and on that one, we did a single story extension out the back and wow. a loft conversion and just redeveloped the whole house. And that's who? Because that's not just, you know, doing a bit of rewiring, is it? That's major structural work. Did exactly. You do that? Did you do that yourself? Yeah, so um, we obviously we got builders in to do all the, the work, but um, oh, we right. were there project managing the whole thing. We basically, my mum and dad were always helping on these projects, which is really handy because they're free labour and they're very keen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I'd rewired it um, with someone from my work overseeing that because I wasn't qualified then and they right. had to sign it off. And, um, and then my brother would handle the exterior and the garden and the driveway. And then we just started trying to find tradesmen. So basically speaking to friends of friends who have used people. And we've sort of grown it from that. Um, and we were just a really lucky time. It was, that, it was a time wow. in, in Kent where wow. properties really boomed whilst we were developing it. And it was one of those that in hindsight, we could have just bought, kept, and it would have gone up a really good amount because it was just lucky. So we managed to then... <laughs> yeah exactly Wish I that. Yeah. yeah exactly so and we just went from one to the to the other to the other and and, and, and always you've always done them up and sold them so that's just that's what that's the flip strategy isn't it that's the strategy yeah you've, you've never been I'm sort of was it financial reasons why you decided not to keep any and rent them out or well um, at the start was just to yeah just to try and grow the pot really I, I do have a rental property as well um that I've bought right. But that was just, that was a, um, we bought that brand new. Well, I bought that brand new. Right. Okay. Um, it just felt like a really good deal. And I, I, I try and build a bit of a pot up to put into property. And then it's nice to have a rental income because it's much more steady than the developing. So how long was that project? So that one was just a year, the, the initial oh, one. Yeah, it, it actually went pretty smoothly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So after that, on to the second one. Sold that one. Yeah. Use the yeah. money to buy what? Uh, so we then bought another one again in the local area. So we've always stuck to, um, so we're based in the borough of Bromley. Okay. So we've always, oh, well, that's the real borough, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. And so we've always stuck to that borough because 
we know it well. I have looked at other areas, but it's not just knowing that area well. It's knowing that your tradesman lives 10 minutes away rather than an hour away and people don't mind working late if they can get home quickly. Um, so, yeah, so then we've just gone. We went from that one to another one around the corner, which was definitely a case of the worst house in a beautiful road. It was a it was a private road, but the negative to it, we were the first house in and the road off of the private road was a really busy road. So it took about two years to sell it because it was constant loud traffic if you were in the garden. But the road itself just gets more and more magnificent as you go down it into million pound plus property. Oh, right. So we, we thought it, it was a good buy and it, it turned out to be a fantastic buyer, but it just took an awful long time to sell. Okay. So then that was that and then on to another one? Yeah, so then that was my... I then bought one on my own for the first ever time. And it was actually an auction inspired by Homes Under the Hammer, none, hey. nonetheless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, that was one I bought for 283,000 um, in, in the borough of Bromley again. And I remember that not figure so well because my budget was 280. And I just oh. got, that, I got that tiny bit caught up in the madness of the auction. Um, but fortunately, that's not too bad. And what was the, tell me through the numbers on that. So you bought it for 283, you spent, how, what, how long did that take? So that was, that was just under about 10 or 11 months again. So that was just a single story extension out the back. And I ended up, I did write that down. So I sold this for 415,000 and I made about 65,000. So I spent about 67,000 on that. Um, okay. Just basically extending three meters out at the back. Okay. Permitted development. Yeah, exactly. And then okay. just renovating the whole thing so and, then, and and but what what made you decide to film all these because the good news is you did actually film some of these didn't you yeah and back then i didn't as well it, it, it's one of two things everyone always asked me it's so random they're like what do you do because i i was an electrician and then i sort of got into this property thing and then i'd work for my brother and the landscaping thing and randomly i also started a business when i was an, an apprentice electrician selling these these gloves for electricians so one of the main reasons I put it on YouTube is all of my girlfriend who now wife's friends at the time was always like, what do you do again? <laughs> because you seem to do half a dozen things here and there. Um, so that I, and I just thought it was a really interesting thing because YouTube has lots of, you know, plumbers, electricians, builders, but I don't see a lot of people doing the full flip, um, especially back three years ago when I started it, people filming the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest negative to it is I'm a complete technophobe and don't know anything about cameras and things like that. So I've had to learn that the hard way. Yeah, but you get a lot of people watching, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's just now you look back at the stuff you did three years ago and you're like, oh, the, the quality was really poor, <laughs> but uh, it, I'm getting better slowly. It. Yeah, well, people like to see that transition, I think. Yeah. So um, for somebody sort of watching and thinking about doing this, then what, what sort of, from your experience, what, what, what tips would you hand, hand on? Well, I actually do think the auction, and I'm not just saying this because I'm speaking with you, is a good place, but it's one of those places as well that you sort of can get carried away at. So I think as long as you work out your budgets, but I have done well from two auctions. I've been to four auctions and bought properties at two of them and lost out on two of them um, just because they went so high. But personally, I think the best ones for me are the ones where they are a complete wreck, but there's room to expand. So not just literally keeping it everything the same, but buying it, doing it up and selling it. I think the best ones for me have been where you add an ensuite or you add, make the bathroom bigger or you go into the loft just like, because I once did a project and I literally kept the house exactly as it was. And it was a, a wreck. But and I just developed it as it was, but just brand new. And that was my most disappointing one profit wise. And it took a long time to sell. And I think with everything being online, with people can see what you paid for it when you bought it. So I think people can sort of see that, oh, well, you've only just sort of done it up and you haven't improved it dramatically. So I would go say the big, big one is room to expand and sort of improve the projects dramatically as and, you, as and you've stuck very close to home yes. yeah yeah so that's definitely important I, I i have looked at other areas but 
you just don't know because the borough of Bromley is actually quite expensive, which is one of the negatives to there. So I've looked at other areas um, such as down by the coast in Hastings and things, but it's one, not knowing if you'll get the money back and it's two, not knowing the tradesmen down there. And, and I'm not sure my tradesmen will be willing to travel for an hour and a half. And so that, yeah, that's another important factor is location. Yeah. Um, and of course you mentioned tradesmen there and that's, getting good tradesmen is such a such an important part of the whole thing isn't it yeah like, once you've got a good team around you um did you make some mistakes with tradesmen oh definitely yeah we've 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 yeah, definitely we've we've chopped and changed over the years just to some some people are just unreliable and some people try and sort of give you one job at a low price and then they'll rack up the next price because they think they're going to get the work so we've had we've had a few issues with builders and and plumbers and things but now we've got a really settled team and it's really nice because it can just be as simple as a whatsapp message now and you'll have someone come over give you a, a quote and then give you accurate times the, the thing that winds me up the most is is someone saying oh yeah i'll start monday and they just don't start for weeks so i'm really lucky the position i'm in now that most people are reliable <laughs> Well, that is great news. And of course, you being, are you now qualified as an electrician? Yes. So in terms yeah, that, of that's uh, great because it's one thing that, you know, a lot of people can obviously do a lot of DIY stroke minor building works, but of course you can't touch electrics and you can't touch gas. So the fact that you've, you've got that skill is quite a bonus, isn't it? Oh, definitely. It's, it's really, that would be another piece of advice if you could have the time to go and learn one of these skills at night college or. Yeah. You know, one day, my, my college was only one day a week, so it'd be really oh, great. Perfect. Really? Yeah, yeah, it was just a Wednesday afternoon, one day, and then I had an apprenticeship at the time. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it, One Hyde Park in Knightsbridge. Oh, gosh, the, the one by the Candy Brothers. Yeah, that's it, yeah. That, that, that was my apprenticeship, so. Oh, uh, my gosh, well, wiring that up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Another set of electrically operated curtains. Wow. Yeah, yeah that was insane. That would be like the studio flats would sell for sort of six million, and then yeah, someone yeah. would would rip out three years of your work and you'd redo it all <laughs> it's just different world <laughs> wow but so how many how long did it take doing one day a week of of night school to get those three is is three years so the company three years, okay. Four, yeah. Okay. yeah there are faster ways of doing it but then that was the best way for me learning on the job yeah, yeah. and going yeah. to college and then you, you've got it so that's definitely a, a skill which is useful to have so what's next then well, actually, um, coincidentally, I, I bought a bungalow um, in Bromley area again. Right. And work actually begins tomorrow. So oh, right. I've owned it since October, um, put in for planning permission to extend. Um, it's a really small fronted bungalow, but it's detached. Um, and I put in permission to go out the back, um, turn the dilapidated asbestos filled garage into two bedrooms at the side and then do a small loft dormer up in the loft as well so that came back in January um, and then I've just been getting my ducks in line with money and builders um, and it literally starts tomorrow wow um, um, so and so are you gonna be filming that yes yeah so there's already two or three videos on there of the state it was in when I bought it and then me clearing it out and then how, how many episodes will there be then for well I'm probably going to yeah, exactly. I'm probably going to try and do one at least every couple of weeks. So I, I like to put on quite good content on. So on Instagram, I'll put stuff daily or every couple of days. But oh, wow. on YouTube, I'll do something every couple of weeks. Um, so, for example, the asbestos comes out by the asbestos guys tomorrow and then the garage comes down Wednesday. So I'll probably film that and the groundworks and then put that video on and then move to the next stage. And then I'll, I'll do a big huge video at the end of basically all the videos together. yeah 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 that's gonna be interesting I've, i know about as best off from you but i've never seen the guys turn up in their beast yeah yeah and do it but um that's definitely something you've got to do isn't it yeah yeah exactly and it's going to be quite difficult for them because the garage is propped right up against their detached house so i think they sort of have to be so careful i'm not even sure how they're going to do it i guess work out to in but i'm sure they know what they're doing yeah, for sure. So we'll see that in uh, in the coming months. Yeah. Great. Well, listen, uh, some 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 basic so final tips for for people again who are thinking about you know could I be the person who do this? 
you know, I mean, you know, did you have fears when you started out? Um, was it was it all plain sailing? I mean, what would you say to somebody who's thinking about this? Oh, definite fears because it's it's an awful lot of money and there's no guarantees that you'll do a place up and it will, you know, go up hugely in value and especially everything in the economy at the moment as well. You never know what's going to happen. But um, I've certainly made mistakes as well and um, just de- like sort of not getting maybe multiple quotes when I've used someone before and then making that mistake and realising they're overcharging you a bit, things like that. But generally, most of my sort of feedback from doing it is positive. I, I, I absolutely love it. I, I even love the dirty work of just ripping out the kitchens and throwing st- putting stuff in a skip is for some reason really satisfactory to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my major tip is to just do your research, like you guys say on Homes Under the Hammer and just really make sure that you you know the area well and you know what roughly what things are going to cost. And then I always add on whatever my estimated budget is, I then add on like 15% as just standard because it's never ever on budget. <laughs> Of course not, no, <laughs> no. But at least if you've uh, if you put it in there, then you've got some <laughs> yeah. overrun. Well, it's brilliant. So, what's your channel called? Uh, it's called Nick's Home Renovation. Nick's Home Renovation. Well, we'll check that out. Thank you. Lovely to talk to you. Good luck with the rest of the projects. Thanks very much, Martin. Cheers. Uh, that's Nick Morris. Oh, I'm Martin Morris. Property Tidbits. <laughs>